Hey people, how are you all? I hope you've been well. Today I'm trying something a little bit funky really, in that I am not just drawing my OCs for once, but I am recreating a painting using my OCs. Specifically this Godspeed painting by Edmund Layton in 1900, which as far as I can tell from a quick little Google search, has absolutely nothing to do with King Arthur stories or the Knights of the Round Table, and yet is also one of the two paintings that shows up if you Google Images search for the names of any of the knights and repeatedly shows up for all of them. No idea why, it just is, so I figured why not recreate this with some of my comic characters, more specifically Isiolt and Palamides, both because I haven't had the chance to draw the two of them yet, and also because of what I wanted to talk about today. You see, the release of both Heartstopper and Our Flag Means Death recently has brought back that reoccurring debate that's been around since the days of early anime shipping, which is, is it concerning and uncomfortable when someone who is not a queer man mostly ships pairings that involve two queer men? This got me further thinking about my own stories and why, when sketching out an idea, I always seem to gravitate towards stories that have queer men as the leads, and further to just the general lack of women at all in the main comic I'm working on. You see, shipping questions aside, although I probably will circle back around to that, I've always just struggled to write female characters who feel real and human to me. I feel like I draw on stereotypes much more for when I'm putting them together, unlike most of my men and non-binary characters, who I just kind of have an instinctive feel for who they are without needing to quantify it in the same way, if that makes sense. So I sat down and I had a long hard think about why this is, and here is what I came up for. So with my main story specifically, the biggest problem is obviously that it's based on stories from the 14th century. Not only are all the knights obviously dudes, but practically all the women in those stories fall firmly into the category of could totally be replaced by a sexy lamp and it would not alter the events of the story at all. The few women who do not fall into this category are either evil witches, I'm sorry, enchantresses, or mostly unnamed damsels who help the knights on their quest. But even including all of these, I can't really think of any whose entire existence doesn't revolve around either making sure the knight ends up with his love interest, being said love interest, or trying to destroy said love interest out of jealousy or boredom. In fact, the only exception I can think of is Morgos, whose purpose is to, you know, destroy all of Camelot and rule over everybody, so, you know, given she's kind of a true evil villain, we're just gonna sideline her for a bit. <laughs> That's a whole other video. Needless to say, it doesn't exactly give you a lot to work with. One of the reasons I chose to write my first comic on the Knights Around Table, other than the fact that I'm obsessed with it, is because it gave me a sense of story structure and a cast of characters to work with to develop my ideas, rather than having to start from scratch, which is a little bit daunting and I have tried to do a couple times, but most of my stories from scratch have gaps that need more time to fill them. I managed to eke out one decent female character, I think, in the form of Branchian, but that was kind of it for a while, until eventually I decided, screw this, and started making some of my knights into women, such as Palamides I'm drawing here. However, it was after I first watched BBC's Merlin back in 2020, early 2020, when I first went to uni, which for the record is absolutely brilliant, but a million miles off anything resembling the original Legends of King Arthur or the Knights of the Round Table at all. Like, once again, that is a whole other video that I'll be happy to make if anybody wants to listen to it. But it was then that it first occurred to me to maybe just add a bit of complexity to some of the women who did exist in my story. Like, for instance, Gwen could be more than a naive, scared woman who's being used. I mean, she's always basically a nothing character in retellings, and then either Arthur's brilliant and Lancelot's terrible, or Lancelot's brilliant and Arthur's terrible. And here I was like, why don't we just make them all into complicated people, which is what BBC's Merlin had done. And I was like, what if, you know, she could be more than that naive little scared woman. Maybe she could be smart and fully aware of her rubbish situation, but picking it and choosing it because she thinks it's what's best. It took even longer for me to try and develop Isiel, who was in the story from the beginning because it centers around her and Tristan. But to develop her past being a self-absorbed, shallow shell of a person, 
And that only started to happen, really, when I started working on her relationship with Pala. Which brings me on to my next point. Lesbians! <laughs> I want to write queer stories, it's part of who I am, I want to be able to put that out there, there aren't enough queer stories, and that means that my protagonists are almost never straight. In fact, I believe the only story I've ever written with a straight lead character, that straight lead character is actually trans, and hence straight, but also still queer. But this does mean that if I choose to write a female lead anywhere else except for that one story, I also naturally kind of want a female love interest for that female lead. But the thing is, unless you go digging, it's surprisingly hard to find lesbians just casually existing in mainstream media. And even when you do find them, an overwhelming number are either overly sexualized or they're all enemies to lovers stories for some reason. Which isn't necessarily a problem, it's a great genre, I just personally find it very hard to get invested in a story and a relationship if I can't imagine the characters as good friends. Heck, I love She-Ra, it's brilliant, but I really did not care about whether or not Catra and Adora got together romantically until season 5 when we finally saw them developing their friendship as adults and past that stage that they'd been at before, you know, everything went wrong. On the other hand, so many ships between two men are friends to lovers stories. Especially, unfortunately, the times were being queer baited, which does say something about the inherent sexism in the affection between two men is always an indicator of romance, but affection between two women is just great pals. Like, that there is a problem there, which, you know, I don't quite have the solution to right now. Um, but even then, there are very few examples of shows I can think where we've been queer baited with a lesbian pairing. There's actually a weird shortage in media in which we have two female characters who are close friends when neither one is romantically involved with a male love interest. Which obviously you can choose to ignore that, but if a straight romance is written half decently I tend to accept it as canon even if I'm not like actively rooting for it and it interrupts whatever other ships I've got going on. And since I am always most enthusiastic about ships built on a strong friendship, I found I do just naturally tend towards gay friends to lovers stories. With the odd straight romance thrown in where the writers have taken the time to show the characters caring about each other and caring about each other's personalities and spending time together. Which, I mean, I don't have the answer whether you think that's concerning or not is really up to you and if you think I do have a problem, then maybe, like, I should look into that. But I have come across the odd lesbian story I really care about. There are just so fewer of them. The final issue I've found I have with female characters is probably the genre I like to write and create in. I mostly read and write. Also, can I just say that I'm using write in a very liberal sense here and more mean just coming up with a hundred character ideas in my head that never make it to the real world or the page. But I mostly read and create for the fantasy adventure kind of genre. I consume western fantasy media like a person possessed and because the genre is often very heavily based on European Middle Ages and has a storyline centering on journey and feats of strength and skill there are much fewer women in these stories than in dystopian fiction, or urban fantasy, or modern romance, for example. I create best, I believe, by starting with examples of things I have seen and loved, and then just kind of smashing them all together to create something new, before stripping away and adding bits so that the character I'm creating fits with their backstory and the other characters around them, and it all comes together like a little puzzle piece and carve away at them. I'll decide how they need to function in the plot and change them up a little so that the way they're going to act is in character and coherent, and hopefully by the end of it I end up with something completely new and it doesn't look like I have just ripped off a bunch of other people's ideas. You'll have to be the judge of that one once again. The problem is that for female characters the starting inspiration is just a little bit thin on the ground. I mean, let's be honest, of the characters in my comic at the minute who are women, we have Brangian, who is a feisty no-nonsense type who don't need no man. Isiolt is a snarky bitch who flirts with everyone to get her way. 
Guinevere is shy but smart, but afraid to speak up for herself, which I mean, basically, I mean, all the girls from the teen romance stories last time I checked. And Palamides is an example of a male character who I have repurposed into being a woman for the sake of boosting the numbers, which, ugh. Yeah, I've edited her a bit since then, so hopefully she's looking more like a real person now, but still there. I'm not saying that that's all of who these characters are, or that there's anything wrong with most of those stereotypes, and I'm certainly not saying there aren't a ton of fabulous female characters out there that other people have written. I mean, the entire she cast. If you've ever read Lore Olympus, that is peak. Love that series, love all the women in it. Yennefer from the Witcher TV series, I mean, whatever other issues people have got with that show, you have to admit the women are so much more complex and well-written and stink so much less of misogyny <laughs> than in the books. Then there's, you know, Yelena from Marvel, who I love, she's amazing, and the Skylar Sisters from Hamilton, Eurydice from Hades Town, which is actually an excellent example of how to take a basically non-existent character from mythology and give them life and purpose and develop them into somebody who has agency and makes decisions. But there's also a ton of characters who do fall into the same handful of roles, where the authors either try to write a strong character and equated physical strength to emotional strength, or decided that if a character wanted to have agency then she has to reject all advances of any men forever and be totally fine on her own and be super closed off and all that. And it just makes it harder, without as much stuff to draw on. Someone, I forget who, once said that we need to be creating new roles and stories for women rather than trying to squish them into pre-existing male-oriented ones. I believe that was over the talk of there being a female James Bond, which was like, I mean, it'd be cool, but why don't we just write a new character? And that's completely what I want to be able to do. I'm going to keep working as hard as I can to get better at this. In fact, a few weeks ago I purposefully forced myself to create a story concept with an all-female main cast. I had originally had this idea and I was thinking about having, you know, two boys as my lead characters and then I was like, no, we're not doing this again. This is like the third time this has happened. We're gonna try and swipe it clean, restyle this story so that it works for female cast. And it was loads of fun when I got into it, but the point still stands. Anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this originally very structured voiceover that has definitely descended into a bit more of a rant slash ramble, but I mean, you, you should be expecting this by now. I, I never seem to get to the end of voiceover without it having descended into some kind of madness. But either way, I hope you'll leave a like, think about subscribing, I hope you have a lovely day slash week, and I'll see you all soon. Bye!